Hello friends, I hope you are well. Do you love ChatGPT? Well, almost everyone does. But Google has just announced their new Bard, which is set to compete with ChatGPT. Will it kill it? Let's check out what they say about it and uh, they'll have some comments about it as well. Let's check it out. So ChatGPT has been making waves all over the internet and uh, Google has been, um, well, falling behind a little bit. So they decided to make an announcement and this is a blog post from their CEO, Sundar Pichai. It says, an important next step on our AI journey. Let's check this out. AI is the most profound technology we're working on today, whether it's helping doctors detect diseases earlier or enabling people to access information in their own language. AI helps people businesses and communities to unlock their potential and it opens up new opportunities that could significantly improve billions of lives yeah i i believe that fully ai will truly revolutionize and change our lives now the big question with all these new ai tools is will they be able to start taking the i'm not a robot box for you that would be something that would truly revolutionize the way we use internet or actually how about declining all those cookie settings? That'd be something, right? That's why we reoriented the company around AI six years ago and why we see it as the most important way we can deliver on our mission to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And I think, great, good job, Google, Alphabet, whatever. Since then, we've continued to make investments in AI across the board, and Google AI and DeepMind are advancing the state of the art. Today, the scale of the largest AI computations is doubling every six months, which is, uh, is quite, pretty, pretty fast. It says it's far outpacing Moore's Law. And um, if you don't know Moore's Law, it uh, states that uh, the capacity of a microchip uh, doubles every two years. So here it's, uh, it's doubling every six months. At the same time, advanced generative AI and large language models are capturing the imaginations of people around the world. In fact, our, our transformer research project and our field defining paper in 2017, as well as our important advances in diffusion models are now the basis of many of the generative AI applications you're starting to see today. So yes, Google Alphabet, whatever they are, sort of pioneering this stuff, uh, but they haven't introduced a lot to the public yet. And uh, that will change with the introduction of BARD. Now it isn't fully public yet. I'm assuming it won't be very long because ChatGPT is really on the forefront. And um, well, they have a pretty big first mover advantage. So whenever I make a video and I forget to make a dad joke, I get a lot of comments about it. So I figured I'm going to prepare a dad joke for this video. And I had a, a great one about uh, computers. Uh, and I told to my friend to see his reaction. But he said, I don't like computer jokes, not one bit. If you got any good dad jokes or jokes in general, put them in the comments and I might add them for the next video. And they continue to say it's a really exciting time to be working on these technologies as we translate deep research and breakthroughs into products that truly help people. That's the journey we've been on with large language models. Two years ago, we, we unveiled next generation language and conversation capabilities powered by our language model for dialogue applications or Lambda for short. Now it's a little different to chat GPT and we're going to get to that later on in the video, but um, Bard is more focused on conversation capabilities while chat gpt is more of a, of a prompt based well how should i put it in layman terms of a text transformer basically so it's going to be easier to speak with bard and if you're working with like written text or essays then chat gpt could be the better option for now at least or at least based on you know the training models. We've been working on an experimental conversational AI service powered by Lambda that we're calling BARD. And today we're taking another step forward by opening it up to trusted testers ahead of making it more widely available to the public in the coming weeks. So it's coming weeks. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not like, you know, uh, next year. So I assume we can get some uh, tests pretty quickly. BARD seeks to combine the breadth of the world's knowledge with the power intelligence and creativity of a large language models. It draws on information from the web to provide fresh, high quality responses. BARD can be an outlet for creativity, 
and Launchpad for Curiosity, helping you to explain new discoveries from NASA's James Webb Tel Space Telescope to a nine-year-old, or learn more about the best strikers in football right now, and then get the drills to build your skills. Uh, and it kind of says here that it's more, if you read between the lines, you can see that uh, Bard being, a, it's a conversational AI, but it's a little more factual based, and it rhymes well with what Google is right now and how AI can help to improve Google's services when you're searching. Uh, and I, I, I assume this will be implemented straight into Google, so you don't need a, a standalone system in the end. And they're continuing here, we're, we're releasing it initially with our lightweight model version of Lambda, this much smaller model requires significantly less computing power, enabling us to scale to more users, allowing for more feedback. We'll combine external feedback with our own internal testing to make sure BARD's responses meet a high bar for quality, safety, and groundedness in real-world information. We're excited for this phase of testing to help us continue to learn and improve BARD's quality and speed. Bringing the benefits of AI into our everyday products. And this is where it gets interesting. I mean, white papers and research and stuff like that. I mean, it's cool to read about, but when you can actually get this stuff into your own homes and try it out and play with it and, and help you with everyday life, that's where it's truly game changing and revolutionary. And they say here, we have a long history of using AI to improve search for billions of people. BERT, one of our first transformer models, was revolutionary in understanding the intricacies of human language. Two years ago, we introduced MUM, which is 1,000 times more powerful than BERT and has next level of multilingual lingual understanding of information, which can pick out key moments in videos and provide critical information, including crisis support in more languages. Now, our newest AI technologies like Lambda, Palm, Imagine, and Music LM are building on this, creating entirely new ways to engage with information from language and images to video and audio. We're, work, we're working to bring these latest AI advancements into our products, starting with search. And again, yeah, Google search will be, I mean, of course, it's their priority. It's their biggest product right now. And with all the ad revenue they're getting from search, obviously, this is where they want to you know, have the big focus, the Google search. One of the most exciting opportunities is how AI can deepen our understanding of information and turn it into useful knowledge more efficiently, making it easier for people to get to the heart of what they're looking for and get things done. When people think of Google, they often think of turning to us for a quick factual answers, like how many keys does a piano have? Yeah, this is, this is what Google is great at right now. But as they're continuing to say here, but increasingly, people are turning to Google for deeper insights and understanding, like is the piano or guitar easy to learn, and how much practice does each need? And this is the strength of ChatGPT right now, because ChatGPT can delve deeper and work with information, context, and specifics. It's a much deeper understanding of what's going on, instead of just providing factual answers. Because just, you know, providing factual answers is sort of the, the absolute minimum base level right now. I mean, we started with, you know, the encyclopedias uh, moved on to what is now Google search. But it needs to evolve. And Ch Chat GBT has taken that step. And Google uh, is probably not far behind with their bar. It's just not available to the public yet. And um, I expect Google to come out really strong in this. Learning about a topic like this can take a lot of effort to figure out what you really need to know. And people often want to explore diverse range of opinions or perspectives. AI can be helpful in these moments, synthesizing insights for questions where there's no one right answer. Soon you'll see AI powered features in search that is still complex information and multiple perspectives into easy to digest formats so you can quickly understand the big picture and learn more from the web, whether that's seeking out additional perspectives like blogs from people who play both piano and guitar, or going deeper on a related topic like steps to get started as a beginner. These new AI features will begin rolling out on Google search soon. So that's kind of cool. We're going to see these features in Google search, um, you know, just popping up. That's kind of, you know, Google's 
main feature right now. They have the Google search advantage. Chat GPT, or, or when you need to use Chat GPT, you need to enter their world, or their app, or their system. Whereas Google search is, um, they have kind of the first mover advantage when it comes to their platform. So uh, we'll see if that, um, if this, if the AI swing will move back into Google's favor when they uh, start using this. So they continue to talk about helping developers and innovate with AI. Uh, and they start next month, they're going to start onboarding individual developers creators so they can try out uh, the generative language API. And uh, they continue to talk about bold and responsible. And, and this has been a topic of late, especially with, uh, well, both text based AIs, but also uh, AI art, where where the responsible acts, uh, the responsible ways can be seen more clearly. But they say here, it's critical that it's critical that we bring experiences rooted in these models to the world in a bold and responsible way. That's why we're committed to developing AI responsibly. In 2018, Google was one of the first companies to publish a set of AI principles. We continue to provide education resources for our researchers, partner with yada yada yada, uh, and work with communities and experts to make AI safe and useful. And that's a really big part of it. I mean, with power comes great responsibility or with great powers come, comes great responsibility. And with AI, you basically have some sort of unlimited power in creation of, of, of text and art. And, and there needs to be, I don't want to say censorship. I don't believe in censorship per se. But there needs to be some sort of responsibility, either from the companies or from the users um, using this. I mean, the, the tool is just a tool. A pen is just a pen. It's what you do with it that kind of decides if, if it's wrong or not. It's good that they're realizing that the, um, AI can go both ways, so to speak. Uh, I did check out... I did ask ChatGPT what they thought or what it thought about Google's Project Bard. So Harry, tell me about Google's AI Project Bard said to compete with ChatGPT. And they say Google's AI Project Bard, bidirectional and code representations from Transformers, is a language model developed by Google AI Language. It is based on the Transformer architecture and has been trained on a large corpus of text data. However, information about its capabilities or its potential use cases is limited, as the project has not been officially released or announced by Google. Well, it has been announced now, but this data is, is not from, uh, probably not from today. So I cannot tell you about how it competes with ChatGPT, as I don't have any specific details about the BARD project. But you can be a little bit tricky here. So I, I asked, can you tell me more about language model for dialogue applications, Lambda for short, and how it competes with ChatGPT? And there it had some more information. It couldn't say anything about BARD, but it could tell me more about Lambda. And I'm going to make myself a little smaller here so you can see. And it says, Lambda is a language model developed by Google AI that can generate coherent and contextually relevant responses for a given prompt in a conversational setting. It has been trained on a large corpus of text data to understand the context and relationship between the words and concepts in input and generate an appropriate response. Uh, doesn't say much, but here, in terms of competition with ChatGPT, both Lambda and ChatGPT are advanced language models that, gen that can generate text that is contextually relevant to a given prompt. Here it comes. However, Lambda has been specifically designed for dialogue applications and has been trained on conversational data making it potentially better suited for generating responses in a conversational setting. Chat GPT, on the other hand, has been trained on a diverse range of text data and can perform a variety of language tasks such as text completion, translation and summar summarization. And it, it continues to be vague, it's not possible to say which model is better, but based on you know, how it's been trained and, and the language model behind, uh, BARD is more a conversational aspect and chat GPT. I, we, we talked a little, little bit about this in the beginning. It can be better for, you know, specific working 
tasks like writing essays and translating stuff and um, just being a little more creative in general. But we'll see. Whatever we see in the upcoming weeks and uh, the new Bard uh, will be, you know, super interesting. And I'd love to compare Bard and ChatGPT more. Uh, we can't, as of yet, use Bard, but um, I'm super psyched for this. I think it's going to be really cool. I've been playing around a lot with ChatGPT, and I have an upcoming video on ChatGPT. If you uh, enjoy this content, feel free to like if you want to. If you don't, that's fine too. As always, have a good one.